Hey everybody, Sean Forney here. I'm gonna do a quick review and first impressions video of my Ram TRX that is behind me. I've had it for, I think about 1200 miles now and I wanna kind of give you uh, my viewpoint as an owner of a 2018 Raptor. Uh, we had that, we just recently got rid of it. So I've had both vehicles. So I wanna kind of give you my impressions on the truck as it relates to the Raptor and just go over some of the things that I've found out about it, Cork's features, things like that in my first 1200 miles of ownership. So stay tuned, I'll go over the video. Thank you. Hey everybody, here is the exterior of my 2021 Ram 1500 TRX, otherwise known as the T-Rex, the beast or whatever you wanna call it, but this thing is an absolute monster. So as somebody who owned a 2018 Ford F-150 Raptor and put 60,000 miles on it, I would say I'm in a good compare or a good perspective to offer some insight between the two and the differences between the two. Now, obviously you can't hardly compare them, but they are in the same class. Ram came out with the TRX as a direct competitor for the Raptor and they did one heck of a job. We will see how Ford responds with the Raptor R being anxiously awaited and I will order one whenever they announce it. So that being said, on the exterior of my Ram TRX, you will see that it's for the most part, it's a pretty stock looking TRX. The only options I got on the exterior are the Ram Mopar off-road style running boards and the tonneau cover. And I got the tonneau cover. I've had some on some trucks and not on the other, but anytime I go to throw something in my bed, I would almost rather hook up my trailer and pull my trailer around. I did get the bed liner and the optional, uh, the optional tow group package, but I like you, the tonneau cover because I can throw stuff in here, some of my sports stuff, kids sports stuff, and it'll stay dry and I can just leave it in there. I don't have to worry about leaving my golf clubs out in the rain. So I do have a bulletproof hitch, which if you aren't familiar with bulletproof, look them up. Their hitches are absolutely tanks. Like that one probably weighs 50 pounds. It's made very, very well with amazing construction and it's uh, uh, rubber or rhino lined or rubber coated or whatever you want to call it. But this is a black on black on black vehicle. I always say and tell myself that I'm never going to buy a black vehicle begin or again because I absolutely hate keeping them clean. But who am I fooling? Black, in my opinion, is one of the most beautiful colors on a vehicle ever made. They make vehicles look extra, extra smooth, crisp, defined, whatever you wanna call it. Now, the only thing I haven't done yet, like I do on most of my vehicles, is get my windows tinted, but that'll be happening soon. On the inside of the vehicle, as soon as you open the door, you are greeted with, in my opinion, a very, very, well specked out domestic vehicle. One of my complaints about domestic vehicles, Japanese vehicles, especially if you've driven German or European cars is the interior never stacks up. But over the past several years, domestic companies has ve have very, very stepped up their use of leather trim dash, leather wrapped steering wheels, Alcantara, uh, good sound system. So they've come a long way. Now you still do have your nice plastic tidbits um and you know these rubbery cup holder thing in my bobs but i'm not going to complain because i will use them um but on the interior you're greeted with a nice accentuated uh uh interior with carbon fiber tidbits throughout this truck does have the carbon fiber package and you can see you have nice touches of carbon fiber throughout the vehicle this particular vehicle uh, the TRX, you are greeted with a nice TRX Ram to let you know that you own one of the baddest trucks ever. Uh, nice large display. Here is the window sticker. So this particular truck as equipped, the window sticker was $89,635. So I am one of those people that will not pay over sticker for anything that I buy. I don't mind paying MSRP on a vehicle like this, but I'm not going to give you a 10 or 15 or even a 20 or $30,000 uh, market addendum like most dealers are requesting on this. So I connected with the guys at Dutch Miller Chrysler Dodge in South Charleston, West Virginia. They had an allocation. They were willing to sell me one at sticker. So I bought it. 
I called 40 dealers before finding these guys who were willing to make a deal. So that being said, on the window sticker, the most important option that I would say most people are going to go with, kind of like the 802A package on a Raptor, is the TRX Level 2 Equipment Group. That gives you a lot of nice features that you can utilize and you will enjoy. So, so one of the interesting things on the interior, I will say, is this wonderful, uh, I don't know what that is. It gives you a lot of quick calculations and uh, sizes, standard and metric and all that. Then at the bottom of this, which you can't see because I got so much junk in there, is is a little uh, Easter egg that uh, Daimler Chrysler is very, very famous for using. So that being said, you have a bunch of excellent features in the display that you can use. Uh, I thoroughly enjoy using all of them. It's very, very intuitive. The only thing that uh, Chrysler still hasn't made super, super quick is the performance pages. It's been laggy since it came out, but you do get a lot of excellent data. Now, on the interior, one of the things that I find very interesting is, wow, look, it's a mirror, and then now all of a sudden it's a camera. So our new Denali has that, and my Ram has that. Uh, it's a first for me, but after you get used to it, I actually kind of like it. So I, you know, the only time it come, becomes a pain in the butt is if you're trying to see what your kids are doing back there, then you do have to flip this, which then turns it back into a mirror. So one of the things that I like. Uh, so now I'm gonna take you on a drive and give you my impressions while on the road. Okay, so some of my first thoughts and first impressions while driving the TRX in comparison to the Raptor. Well, I feel like they do drive very comparable as far as handling and overall drivability. The one area that I believe the Ford outshines the, the TRX is whenever, whenever Ram designed the TRX, they wanted it to be a full-time all-wheel drive vehicle, which I I find I find that to be a weak part, a weak point because most trucks you always have the option for it to be rear-wheel drive. The Raptor gets better fuel economy, and the TRX would also. There are guys out there with the TRXs that modify them with a software update to run in two-wheel drive, which. From my understanding, they haven't quite confirmed or denied if it's really good for the transfer case. So, that being said, whenever you go to pass somebody and you mash this thing to the floor because it's all-wheel drive, you better hold on to the steering wheel because this thing, wherever that wheel's pointing, it's going to stick, grip, rip, and it's going to go that way. So the first couple times I passed somebody, I found out the hard way that this thing is gonna go right off the road if you have the wheel angled. So the best thing to do if you're passing somebody is to slowly get into it and then it's fine. That's one area that the Raptor does outshine. I think the controllability of the Raptor is a lot more refined than the TRX just because of the power and that could be handled if they would offer the TRX in a rear wheel drive uh, option or at least give you the option to run it in rear wheel drive and not full-time all-wheel drive which does absolutely destroy the fuel economy i think you could probably get an extra four miles per gallon maybe even five or six if it was rear wheel drive uh, and you had the option to select it so that being said my overall fuel economy in 1359 miles that i've owned this truck is roughly 10.2 miles per gallon now that is a mix between pulling my trailer highway driving, town driving, etc. So, it's not the best on fuel economy, but who are we fooling? We are not going to be buying the TRX because it gets good gas mileage. It's just not why you buy a Ram TRX. You buy it because it's freaking amazing. It sounds good. You mash on the gas and it goes. You, you want to have the most horsepower when you show up to a meet and you're the, you know, there's 10 other trucks there and you know you just want to be loud so that that's why you buy a TRX you're not buying it for the fuel economy who are we fooling so 
that being said, if that's why you're, if, if you're buying a TRX for the fuel economy, well, you're wrongfully mistaken. It's a bad idea. It's just not worth it. But if you're buying the TRX because it has a, a Hellcat engine in it, detuned down to 702 horsepower from the standard 707. But it's amazing. The truck itself has power for days. You're never going to run out of power. It pulls very, very hard. It has a, a, a great quick reacting transmission. If you drive it in sport mode, it will uh, rev match whenever you're downshifting. You can just hold this thing to the floor and it shifts so smoothly. So, I mean, the truck does have wonderful, wonderful features about it besides the fact it's an off-road beast that you can take Baja in, you, in the desert and sand dunes and keep the pedal to the floor or you can do some crawling with it. Uh, I have an opportunity right now to show you how it sounds from the inside, so let's go ahead and do that. And it just puts a smile on your face! So, I mean, this truck will literally keep a smile on your face every time you start it up. That's one thing with the Track Hawk that I thoroughly enjoyed was its ability to put a, put a smile on my face each and every single time I got in it to drive it in the morning. I would oftentimes drive my track hawk over anything else just because the Hellcat platform is so amazing. Uh, if once these engines, if they do become more affordable, I could see these engines being swapped into RX-7s and 240s and Mazda Miatas and RX-8s and you know, so on and so forth because they're such a good platform. They're pretty well proven. Uh, they're pretty reliable and I just find it absolutely insane. Whenever I was a kid and I had a uh, uh, 1992 Civic Coupe with a GSR swap and, you know, I made 250 horsepower and ran a 14 two quarter mile, like I thought that was incredible. And now you can buy 702 horsepower or you can buy a Demon with 900 horsepower and it's a reliable daily driver with no cooling issues or anything from that in that regard I just find it absolutely insane so to wrap up my review and first impressions of ownership uh, of 1361 miles I will say the truck overall has not disappointed uh, again my only complaint would be that uh, mashing on it when you're passing somebody it, it just goes wherever the wheels are pointing so you better hold on to the steering wheel tight and understand what your truck is capable of because this thing will pull you all over the place until you let off the throttle because the big nice tires on it it grips it rips uh so that being said everybody i appreciate you guys watching another video of mine please like subscribe if you have any questions or comments in particular about one of the vehicles that i own or a piece of equipment or whatever the case is please make sure to leave your comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. Thank you guys so much. Have a great day.